Hello there and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Baseball. Head coach Matt Riser, presented by your local Southern Quality Four dealers and also Buddy's Bar and Grill right here in Hammond, who's our host once again here in 2016. I'm Alan Waddell and joined as always by the head baseball coach of your Southeastern Lions, Coach Matt Riser. Coach, thanks for being here. Uh, the homestand continued. Uh, you had four big home games this past week. You go two and two on the week. A uh, very good Troy team came in. Uh, talk about the week as a whole. Yeah, you know, uh, last weekend we, we took two out of three to open up the, the season and we were at home and uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't real happy with the series. I didn't think even the wins we played, I didn't think we played very hard. I thought we kind of went out there and felt our way around a little bit. Uh, it was tough. We went two and two this week. They had a good Troy ball club that came in, competed well, very similar to our ball club. Uh, had some tough kids. It, it, you know, We dropped one on Friday night, could have gone either way. We had the one bat in on Saturday, then go our way. But uh, a little bit more proud of the way the kids responded. You know, we, we had our backs against the wall there on Sunday, and I thought we responded very, very well uh, to hopefully continue to stretch where we can get, uh, get a little bit better. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look as the Lions would open up their week on Wednesday night against Alcorn State at the Pat. Here's the highlights. First midweek game of the year, and uh, Alcorn State comes to town here, Coach, as uh, they actually jump on top in this one. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, felt like Pat came out a little timid there early. Uh, you know, they got the little infield single and really pitched elevated in the zone there in that first inning and uh, allowed them to get three runs. They jumped on us early, but uh, really proud of the way we responded back. See there, James and Fisher hitting the RBI single there to center field, uh, which is a big knock for us. And Brennan Burrow getting the start. His uh, first collegiate start there, shortstop for us. Had a nice night for us and a, and a, and a big weekend for us as well. And then. Uh, Webb Bobo comes up here with a big knot and get his first start of the season. Uh, Webb had an extremely good night, and we respond here with four runs here in the bottom of the first inning and Webb's two runs single up the middle. So you mix up the lineup a little bit here on, uh, on Wednesday night against Alcorn. Some guys that I didn't start over the weekend, got, got some chances to play here in this one. Yeah, you know, it's early in the season, early in the season, uh, you know, guys can get in there and get their chances. Uh, they, the guys know they got to perform, and uh, if not, we'll mix and mingle and, and make sure we match it up to, to have our best uh, line up in there by the end of the year and uh, you see the freshman there having pace and another freshman there getting his first start as well he's going to be a, a future uh, force to be reckoned with there behind the plate so he got his first start and you saw Pat Cash and got a chance to settle down here in the second inning really uh, proud of Pat he came in after the first we had long talk and uh, allowed our offense to go right back to work and uh, you see good old Jameson Fisher absolutely unloads on this ball. You know, the scouts have been talking about the power, questioning the power uh, here in the early part of the season. You, you can see it, and especially with that swing there, the two-run homer. Second home run of the year for Jameson Fisher, and certainly it's been nice to have his bat back in the lineup here in 2016 after he was sidelined a year ago with that injury. But, uh, you know, faced a little adversity in this one early on, but it was really to come, a, come out and get the bats rolling there uh, and get a big win against Alcorn. Yeah, it was good to see the bats going. You know, we, we struggled, we felt like, all weekend against UL Monroe. And uh, so we were able to, to unleash some things here. And, uh, you know, not even the hits, but uh, like you see here with Webb Bobo, the productive at bats was, were huge for us. Uh, getting guys in, the sack flies, getting guys over. Just thought we played a completely different game than what we did on, on the weekend there with, uh, with Monroe. And, uh, like we said, Pat got settled in there, did a good job of starting to command the fastball. That was really the first inning. You know, fastball was up, couldn't locate it. Uh, you see Gabe Von Rosenberg comes in here and uh, really, uh, to be honest with you, kind of changed the tone for us. It's still a decently tight ball game here uh, in the middle innings, the fourth and fifth inning, comes in and punches out five through two innings and allows the offense to go to work. You see Derek Mount rips a double there down the line and uh, thought this was another statement play for us in the game. Brent Bro still on the pitch. Actually kicks off the third baseman. He scores from first base, which is a pretty impressive speed there by Brennan Bro. Freshman in the lineup, playing shortstop. Here's Webb Bobo again with a, with a solid single in the right field. This one can actually get by the right fielder for extra bases, but at, continuing to add on against Alcorn uh, here in this midweek contest. Yeah, you know, that was a big knock there, and, and we talked about it on the weekend. Uh, we got to do a better job of winning the middle innings, uh, and, and that's what we did. We did a great job, fantastic job of scoring seven runs there in that fifth inning. They really expand that lead and allow freshman Corey Jaconi to come in. Uh, Corey thought he, he did a good job of coming in and locating. So he located the fastball in there, does a good job of feeling his position. Uh, we get some other guys in there. As you see Derek Mount, we got him back on the bump after some of these rough loss and uh, records the last out of the ball game and we finish off Alcorn 15 to three. Lions win, move their record to three and one on the young season, 13 big hits, 15 runs as they really pull away from Alcorn there uh, later in the ball game. Jamison Fisher, uh, your player of the game, four for five, a home run, a big night for him, and nice to see him back in the lineup. Matt, nice to see the offense really, you know, put up a lot of runs in this one. Fell behind early, but 
uh, showed some resiliency and came back and got the big win. Yeah, you know, uh, like you said, we fell behind early. It's kind of maybe a little uh, uh, overlay or hangover from uh, Sunday's uh, tough loss there. Uh, late to Monroe, but uh, again, we talked about the competitiveness of the guys. I thought just from an overall standpoint, we had some moments to mail it in this week, and that was definitely one of them. We, you know, have the have the big uh, deficit there early down three nothing in the first inning, but guys responded well. We come out, the bats wake up, uh, Cashman settles down. We end up throwing, I think, six or seven pitchers in the ball game, all throw well. Uh, so it was a good night for the Lions to get back on that winning column. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the highlights from the weekend series as the Lions would welcome in Troy to the Pat, right here on Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Riser, presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill. Welcome to Buddy's Bar and Grill, located at 1236 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond. Buddy's is home to great steaks, fresh seafood, and friendly service. Buddy's has been voted the best steakhouse and best restaurant in Tangipahoa Parish. With over 2,500 square feet and three large dining rooms, Buddy's can accommodate any party. Buddy's goal has always been to wow customers with their food and prices. Owner Scott Henderson and his family have always believed in giving customers good deals for their hard-earned money. Stop by Buddy's Bar and Grill for dinner and a drink. For more information on Buddy's, please visit buddyshammond.com. This is the time. This is Ford Truck Month. Let me hear you say truck, yeah, let's crank it on up. Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck, and with over 25 million sold in the past 39 years, no wonder it's the number one choice in the hardest working industries out there. This is the place. This is Ford Truck Month. Now get 0% financing for 60 months plus $2,000 cash back on F-150. Truck, yeah! Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Roger, presented by your local Southern Quality Ford dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill right here in Hammond. The Lions would welcome in a good Troy ball club for the weekend series. Let's check out the Friday night highlights. Matt, you welcome in a, a very good Troy team, a team that was undefeated coming over here to Hammond, a team out of the Sun Belt uh, that has played so well here early in the year. And Champagne Beverage was your uh, your game sponsor, Kyle said it's all. He was outstanding once again, and this was a close one all the way to the final pitch. Yeah, you know, this is one of the funner games we've had in a long, long time. You see, uh, Sid gets it started right with a, with a strike out there. Uh, unfortunately, had some stuff. As you see him leave the ball up there uh, in the first inning, started leaving some pitches up. They jump on us early. Uh, they get the big two out knock. You know, we talked about it uh, again for the weekend. Uh, as you see, him with another base hit here to left field. They got first and second. We get the, uh, the second out there, the inning, but the, the lefty comes up here in a second, as you're going to see, and actually drives the ball to right field and gets the big two out knock. Thought we actually misplayed this ball a little bit. I thought we had a play at the plate. Uh, we just throw it in the second, so it's a bang bang play. We thought it would have been a bang bang play there at the plate, uh, and instead he goes in there safely and easily. And that one run might have been the one run that actually bit us later in the game. Their Friday night guy was really good, man. I know we were very impressed with him watching him. He just located all night long. And, and that's what you see on Friday night. Some close games, you got to just keep the core tight. That's it. When we talk about one run ball games, when you play a good club like Troy, uh, Troy, the team that competes as well as they do, very similar to our club in many aspects of the game. Uh, it, it comes down to a lot of little things that have to be executed. Yep, and lo and behold, wouldn't you believe, you know, the guy who makes the play, he comes up, leads off the next inning, and then he rips one there to right field for a single right field for his first collegiate hit as well. Uh, I thought we did some things well, you know, on Friday night. We executed well. We run the hit and run. They picked four or five times in a row trying to slow us down. Uh, we did a good job of, of guarding against some, some good moves there at first base, some quick feet and balk moves, but uh, and it had some productive at bats. As you see, you know, just it looks like a routine ground at first base, but uh, executed at getting the guy in from third base uh, with less than two outs, which is what we need in a one-run ball game. Cuts the lead to two to one at that point. It's tight here in the middle innings. Uh, weren't able to, to, to add any extra ones in that inning, but uh, you get the two to one. Yep, and again, you see that breaking ball there by that right-hander, and he just, like I said, to the right-handers and the lefties, he located and located it well. And uh, now you see Say go back to work. The left-hander got him earlier with a two-run uh, double there. He gets him there on the cutter down and away. Matt, are you surprised with the number of strikeouts Kyle's had early on? You know, a, a little bit, yes. You know, we know that Troy and Monroe are traditionally uh, swing and miss type ball clubs, and what I mean by that, they'll, they'll take their strikeouts along with the home runs because they're a little more physical, but uh, Kyle's done a really good job of locating that cutter and all-speed stuff along with his fastball to uh, give himself a chance. 
Well, here you go, offensively, getting getting things going. Chris Eads with a single, uh, Bro with a single, and you got something cooking. Yep, we, we do. And, uh, you know, again, here we go, talking about just that productive bat. Nothing really impressive there, just a little routine ground at first base, but uh, gets a big run in there to tie it up 2-2. You know, we had base runners on all night long. I think at the end of the night, uh, what it came down to was the big two out knocks. And you see Webb Bobo here, uh, got the pinch hit, was having a good at bat, fought all four or five pitches, but at the end of the day, he gets the big strikeout. And uh, here's the end of the ball game, exactly what we're talking about. You know, we bases loaded two outs, ninth inning, we don't get the hit. Uh, give them credit for those guys as they got their hits that needed. They win a tight one, three to two. Lions actually out hit Troy on this night, just couldn't get the big hit when we needed it and dropped Friday night. Matt, certainly a tough one on Friday night as, uh, you know, you get there in the ninth inning, bases loaded, one out, just couldn't get it done. I mean, just, you know, that happens yep. if you stick around the game long enough. Uh, but your team over the years has gotten that hit more than they haven't gotten it. Yeah, you know, uh, if you told me our full hole would have been up with the bases loaded, one out, you know, I felt pretty good about it. I think I had some big smiles on my face in that ninth inning thinking we're getting ready to walk off win. But uh, you got to tip your hat to those guys. I mean, there goes, you got a big strikeout, a guy competed, got the next ground out. Uh, and sometimes it happens and, you know, we've got to learn from it and get better and have more productive at bats and make some bigger plays. The Lions and Troy will be back at it on Saturday afternoon. Let's go out and check those highlights out. Here we go into Saturday, Coach. They're trying to even this series up. Uh, Max Roller on the mound. Uh, and would turn in a pretty good start. Yeah, it really would, you know, and really got tested here early. Uh, base knock there to left field to load up the bags and uh, would have had a chance to be a really big inning for him. You know, when you have a tough one like that we did on Friday night when we really felt confident about uh, getting that win, and we don't. We end up getting a loss. Uh, it's tough to, come, tough to come back out and bounce back the next day, and uh, Max Schroeder did it. He did a fantastic job of working out that situation, bases loaded, nobody out, uh, and allows our offense to go work here early, and we, we respond well. Webb Bobo gets a start here on Saturday, uh, and this is exactly what we talked about on Friday night. You know, two outs, runner at second base. Uh, this time we get the two out knock. You know, score the run there from second. Uh, Webb tries to stretch it backside. That's okay. We're playing hard. I can deal with it. Uh, we take the early lead one to nothing there. Big punch out there. Nice slider from Stroller. You know, watching some of the swings here in the highlights, you know, Carson ends up getting a hit here in the six hole. But uh, again, they're right handed that went this day. Again, nothing overpowering or impressive. Uh, from a stuff standpoint, but just located everything. You see he runs a fastball in there on Brim Bro and gets a routine fly out and really felt like our outs on, uh, as good as our outs were on Friday night, our outs on Saturday were just uh, not a whole lot of pressure to them. Uh, you know, had a lot of lazy fly outs, had a lot of strikeouts on, on Saturday and uh, really never put pressure on that defense for Troy. Max Kohler kept it where it needed to be though. You know, here we are in a one nothing ball game. Uh, we felt pretty confident here in, in Mac and uh, really made some really nice pitches. Again, another uh, dominating performance from a strikeout standpoint. I think he ended up finishing the game with 10 strikeouts. Uh, unfortunately, you know, here what happens in this inning, we, we go to the left-hander Peyton Roberts, who I thought threw well. Gets the big punch out on the left-hander to hit the home run. Uh, and then we get the ground ball to turn a double play and unfortunately we kick it again. Uh, and, and, you know, some of this is going to happen early in the year. Especially when you get a freshman starting at shortstop, you know, some big moments. He, he's a good defender. He's going to be a great defender in our program, going to be a great player in our program. But uh, unfortunately, it was a big play in the ball game. They scored four runs there in the, uh, in the sixth inning. This will be the final out of the ball game as uh, Troy wins this one five to one. Some unearned runs there later in the ball game. But a tough one. Dropped the first two of the series. Looking to get a win on Sunday. Matt, another uh, a tough one on Saturday. Uh, you know, made some some defensive, uh, maybe some blunders there, and, and later on in the ball game. And this is something your club we haven't seen a lot of. You, you drop a series, and you got to tip your hat to Troy. But I know that the message was getting back out there and trying to get a victory on Sunday. Yeah, you know, I, to be honest with you, I'm trying to go through my head and think the last time we've lost a series at home. It's been a long time. We've yeah. done a good job there to pad defending our home ground. And uh, like you said, unfortunately, that six in and the the. the the snowball effect showed itself yep. again there, the same way it did it there in Monroe. And uh, you're going to have that. We got some guys mixing and matching. We talked about the catching situation. We had uh, Fisher catching for the first time, Bro there, shortstop for the second night. Uh, you know, Carson Kreitz got in that day as well. So uh, there's going to be some mixing and matching there early, and there's probably going to be some headaches with it. Uh, but we're going to get it right. And, and the impressive part about it is the guys never quit, and they've got to continue to do that. Not to mention Troy, a very good ball club that came in here 
this past weekend. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the Game 3 highlights as the Lions would try to take Game 3 from Troy right here on Inside Southeastern Baseball. Head coach Matt Reiser presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill. Lions Baseball is supported by Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction, located in SLU's hometown, Hammond, Louisiana. Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction is a dealer-only auction. For more information on Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction or their upcoming charity golf tournament, please visit www.lafcaa.com or visit Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction on Facebook and Twitter. Your eyesight is so important, and when it comes to your eye care, let the friendly staff at the Bond Roden Eye Clinic care for you. Doctors Hunter Bond and Chris Roten, along with their staff of trained doctors, are committed to providing every patient with quality care. The Bond Roten Eye Clinic has the latest medical technology and eye care to help you, the patient. With over 14 years of experience, the Bond Roten Eye Clinic has three locations to serve you with offices in Denham Springs, Hammond, and Amite. So if it's a checkup, glasses, or LASIK surgery, you need to visit the Bond Roten Eye Clinic. For more information on the clinic, please visit bondroteniclinic.com. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Baseball with Head Coach Matt Reiser, presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill right here in Hammond. The Lions and Troy with Tangle for Game 3 on Sunday. Here's the highlights. All right, here you go, Matt, coming back on Sunday, wearing the, uh, the gold uniforms. Uh, Dominic Carlini on the mound for your club. Uh, really needed a good start out of him to just try to salvage a game in this series. We really did, you know. Uh, again, here we are. We're down two games none at home. The possibility of getting swept. Really need a, uh, a big performance from Dom. He comes out and gives up two runs early. They jump on him, hit, hit, hit. Uh, you look up, we're down 2 nothing right away. And again, uh, proud of our, our guys for the way they responded. Uh, you see here a play by Jacob Seward. Fantastic play there in the gap in the second inning. Uh, really hitting Dom hard here early. But uh, after that play, really allowed Dom to settle in and start locating some pitches. You can see the change up there down the way. It's not over the middle of the plate. You know, you could expand Troy down, expand Troy off. Uh, you just had to make sure you got there because when you didn't, they'd hammer you like they did in the first inning. But uh, we had a little fortune this day. Uh, didn't hit a whole lot of balls hard off the lefty early, uh, but had some balls bounce our way, fall in, as you see the blooper there by service. Uh, allows us to get something going here with first and second, nobody out. Uh, we don't put the bunt on. Byers does a good job going right back up the middle there with a base knock uh, and knocks in mid yet there to, to score a run and make it 2-1. to one. Like you said, Coach, some adversity in this one. You're down 2 nothing. Have the, the possibility of maybe getting swept on the weekend. Nice to see your club fight back and, and win this ball game and just kind of chip away at it. It really, really is. And, you know, we go again back to the productive at-bats. You know, nothing impressive there. It looks like just a routine 6-3, but uh, Byers does a good job. He's still on the pitch. You know, we get the run scored there from third base. And, uh, again, those productive outs were huge for our offense to continue to, to expand in this game. And, See Dom go right back to work. Uh, you know, he was really good all came uh, after that second inning. You see the change up again down away. We talked about it there, span him down away. You could really do it. And then he started locating some of these pitches, really started getting in the groove. And then uh, their left hander comes up. The big left hander hit the homer on Saturday. They leave him in there on the DH spot on, on Sunday against the left hander. And uh, Dom absolutely uh, ate the barrel up there and did a fantastic job. A lot of offense go back to work. Uh, here's a big uh, knock here by Jacob Seward. Gets a single there down the line uh, and knocks in there Swarner. Uh, and, and thought we did a better job of putting some pressure on their defense. You know, we put some balls on the ground. Uh, we talk about all the time, those, those balls don't take bad hops in the air. You got to put some balls on the ground sometimes. They forced us to make some plays on Saturday. We didn't. We forced them to try to make some plays on Sunday, and they didn't. So, uh, you know, allow us to get some guys on base and knock some guys in. And you see Dom, again, uh, as good as, as he gets. I mean, he started locating that cutter and that change up, and uh, the offense goes right back to work. Here's another chopper to shortstop. Just a big time hustle play, as you see Rhino getting down the line there. Uh, again, uh, we play this way on the weekend. I know we lose two out of three for the entire weekend, but if we play with this type of competitiveness and, and this type of energy, uh, it's got a chance to be a good year for us. We didn't mention it earlier, nice to see Carson Kreitz back in the lineup. You know, he had been absent earlier in the year, but uh, he played on Saturday and then here again on Sunday. Yep, did a good job of coming in the ball game. We got the lead with Sue. We brought Kreitz right in there at second base uh, to, to, to solidify that second base role there defensively. And uh, it was good to see us add some runs. You know, when you looked at the, the, the score box, uh, did a good job of just keep adding some runs here or there. 
You see this one get away from the third baseman. Again, put the ball on the ground, make their defense, make some plays. Uh, and Kyle said a call, comes in there after we pinch runner from mid yet and stole second. You know, we did a good job of just playing fast and hand the ball off to Drew Avens. Uh, Drew, here. yeah, big time play here. They had first and second, one out, almost doubles them off second. Uh, big time play there by Ryan Byers in the gap to keep it where it is. And, uh, Drew gets the left-hander back up, the same guy who hit the homer on Saturday, and we spin him again for another strikeout to end the inning uh, and, and really solidify that save. Lions win this one 7-2, take a game uh, from Troy on Sunday. Big win for the Lions, move to 4-3 and three here early on in the year. Dominic Carlini is your winning pitcher. He's kind of a tough luck loser a week ago. Nice to see him get the victory. Seven innings pitched, nine big punch outs against a very good offensive club for Troy. Matt, a little adversity here early in the year. You, you drop the series, you get behind on Sunday, have a chance to maybe lay down, but you got to like your kid's character to come back and fight back and get a victory against a good Troy team on Sunday. Yeah, it really showed a lot of resilience, you know, to bounce back and get that victory on Sunday, you know, a bounce here, a play here, yeah. a call here. Uh, we're looking the bright end of this and winning the series. So uh, proud of the guys that bounced back after the adversity they had to face. You know, maybe it was a good luck charm from uh, Andy Harper's son, Mr. Parker Harper, who threw out the first pitch for us. We'll maybe have to get him back for another game. And uh, But those guys did a good job of competing. You know, proud of the guys to get back on that winning horse and, and, and go in the right direction. All right, it's now time to take a look at our Lion Profile of the Week. And this week we're going to take a look at Jamison Fisher and his journey back to the Diamond. In 2013, Jamison Fisher bust onto the college baseball scene, being named a freshman All-American by the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association. That season, Fisher hit 315, scored 38 runs, and had 69 hits. Fisher finished his impressive freshman season, being named to the All-Southland Conference Tournament team. Fisher followed up his 2013 season with an even better 2014, batting 389 with 93 hits and 63 runs scored. Jamison Fisher was having the time of his life until the offseason between his sophomore and what would be his junior season. It's kind of hard at first, uh, honestly. It was it was the third game of our Fall World Series, and we were that close to the season. It was supposed to be a big year for the team, big year for me. And it's kind of like everything just taken away in one moment. And I'll never forget riding home with my dad uh, from the doctor once we found out my labrum was torn and just kind of starting to break down. And just because I, I realized I wasn't going to get to play with the team, and it was supposed to be a special year. And, the year before, we had, we won the Commerce Tournament, we dogpiled, we won a championship, and we're supposed to do even more this year. And to know I wasn't going to be, a, be able to be a part of that was it was crushing. I think I was probably more disturbed about it than he was. I mean, the way he looked at it was, look, there's a lot of people out there that have a lot more problems than I have. And so I, I think he took it in the most optimistic way you could take something in that regard. Despite the injury, Jamison still came to the ballpark to support his teammates during the 2015 season. And having a friend who was also sitting out the season due to an injury helped ease Fisher's pain a little. Having Sam there, man, was, uh, that was special. He's uh, one of my good friends, and we've, we've been close for a long time. We've been here for a while, and I knew him even before I came here. He played with my older brother. And, to have him there, we, we traveled together into road, on road trips and to have him in the dugout with me in pregame and, and in rehab. And without Sam, I, I probably wouldn't have been his motivator. You know, we, we helped each other out. On February 19th, 2016, Jameson suited up for the Lions for the first time in 18 months, and he was so ready to get back to playing baseball. It was a surreal moment. Uh, it takes you back to all the, the opening days before and years past, and uh, that one was a little bit more special because it had been a while, you know, and I was. I was just couldn't wait to get out back out there with my teammates and get out there and play the base, baseball game again, you know. I think all the, the hard work has paid off. He had a strong rehab. He followed the doctor's orders. He took it slow. He did it right. Through seven games so far, Fisher is hitting a team high 481 and has driven in seven runs on 13 hits and has added two home runs. Matt, I mean, this guy, his numbers, they, they speak for himself. I mean, his leadership, this is a guy that we certainly missed a year ago. Uh, nice to have Jamison Fisher back in the lineup here in 2016. You know, it really is. And like you said, you know, yeah, the bat's nice to have back in the lineup and the, and the defensive player's nice to have back in the lineup. But uh, more importantly, the, the leadership we get out of him. Uh, you know, we talked about it earlier. He's had a lot of interest there from the professional scouts. And uh, they've, they've consumed a lot of his time before in the preseason era. And, I uh, just told him, you know, I need you to go out and be that leader. You know, I know the bat's going to be there for us, and I uh, could have been more proud of him. I think a lot of the resilience we showed this weekend was a big part of him. All right, well, let's take our final break. We come back, we're going to take a look at the scout report for this weekend right here on Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Reiser presented by your local Southern Quality Ford dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill.
Welcome to Buddy's Bar and Grill, located at 1236 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond. Buddy's is home to great steaks, fresh seafood, and friendly service. Buddy's has been voted the best steakhouse and best restaurant in Tangipahoa Parish. With over 2,500 square feet and three large dining rooms, Buddy's can accommodate any party. Buddy's goal has always been to wow customers with their food and prices. Owner Scott Henderson and his family have always believed in giving customers good deals for their hard-earned money. Stop by Buddy's Bar and Grill for dinner and a drink. For more information on Buddy's, please visit Buddy'sHammond.com. This is the time. This is Ford Truck Month. Let me hear you say truck. Yeah, let's crank it on up. Yeah. Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck. And with over 25 million sold in the past 39 years, no wonder it's the number one choice in the hardest working industries out there. This is the place. This is Ford Truck Month. Now get 0% financing for 60 months plus $2,000 cash back on F-150. Truck, yeah! Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Reiser presented by your local Southern Quality Ford dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill right here in Hammond. And Matt, a very busy week coming up for your club as you have five games coming up and uh, it starts this weekend, your first road trip of the year, the, the 13th annual Keith LeClaire Classic at East Carolina. You're going to take on East Carolina, Maryland, and Tennessee, some very good opponents on the road. Yeah, you know, we set the schedule up uh, to challenge us early. Uh, you saw that come off the Troy series, and we got Tulane, who's number 20 in the country. We open up Friday night with East Carolina. Uh, East Carolina's coming off a two out of three series at Virginia. Uh, so they got uh, in the top 25. They're number 16 in the country now. Maryland uh, dropped an early series to Alabama at Alabama, but you know, coming off a three out of four last weekend, they'll be in the top 20. Uh, and then you got Tennessee there on Sunday who scored 50 runs last week in the tournament. So, and the Southern Miss is off to a hot start. They're seven and zero, so we got them twos you win. So, definitely got our challenge ahead of us, but you know, if our guys continue to compete the way they have this past weekend uh, and going forward, I think we have a good shot to be very successful in those games. It's certainly a measuring stick for your club. You're four and three right now. You're going to find out a lot about your club this weekend and then following uh, the next week with Southern Miss at home and then on the road over in Hattiesburg. Nice to have Southern Miss back on the schedule. Yeah, it really is. You know, uh, I'm originally from Mississippi and, and Southern Miss is right there in my backyard. So it was nice to get those guys back on there. It's always a quality opponent. It's a regional opponent. Uh, made the World Series there and back in 2009. So, uh, again, just helps that RPI schedule. You know, we keep talking about the RPI and uh, with the schedule we put together, uh, we, we do what we did last year and win some of these games. We got a chance to have that at large bid. Certainly so. That's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us as we're going to be back here with you next week right here on Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach Matt Reiser presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers and Buddy's Bar and Grill. See you next week.